Let's imagine there is a company named Quantum Innovations. This company provides solutions in cloud infrastructure. There is a guy named David who has been hired as an intern. His manager has assigned him a project and wants some new features to be added to it. Since David is new to the Linux operating system, he learns a few basic commands and tries to use them to navigate and make changes in the project. First, he uses the ls command to check what files and folders are inside the project. He then verifies the current location by using the pwd command to ensure he copied the project to the right location. Next, he wonders what's inside the files folder. He navigates inside the files folder using cd and again fires the ls command to check the content of the files folder. He sees different features inside this directory and understands that new features need to be developed inside this folder only. He creates a new directory to store the new feature using make directory command. David notices that he misspelled new feature, so he corrects it using the move command by providing the old name of the feature and the new name. David has already prepared a CSV file for this new feature and kept it on the desktop directory. He copies this new file from the desktop to the new feature directory using the cp command and verifies it using the ls command. Using the cat command, he checks the content of the CSV file. The goal of this feature is to split this CSV file into two different files without using split command. Now, David wants to create three new files named A, B, and C to store content of original file. He creates these three files using the touch command. Later, he finds that he doesn't need the third file named C so he deletes it using the remove command. So far, the terminal has been filled with all of David's work. He clears it using the clear command. David wants to read data from a CSV file into one variable called content, so he can reference the data within different commands. He verifies if the data is inside the content variable using the echo command. However, using both the cat and echo commands, drops content of file inside terminal in one shot. To solve this issue, David opts for the less command. This command opens a new buffer with the content of the file. Using the J and K keys, he can navigate up and down line by line. However, he notices that the less command is very slow when working with very large files. Instead, the more command helps to view content page by page. Using the spacebar, he can move forward one page at a time. Thus, cat and echo display content inside the terminal, making it cluttered while less and more open a new buffer instead of displaying the file directly inside the terminal. David realized there had to be a better way for this. So he came across two more commands, head and tail. Instead of displaying the whole file inside the terminal, Head displays the top 10 lines of the file, while tail displays the bottom 10 lines. But what if David wants to display only 5 lines instead of 10? How can he achieve this? David finds out that the head or tail command must provide some option to do that. He uses the man command to read the documentation of the head command. Scrolling down through the documentation, he finds out it's the end flag that he has to provide with the total lines. Using the N flag, he displays only N number of lines inside the terminal. Before splitting the file into two, David wants to know how many lines the original file has. He checks it using the WC command. The WC command provides information about the number of lines, words, and characters the file has. Now he knows that the file has a thousand lines excluding the CSV header. By providing start and end line numbers to the sed command, he prints a specific range on the terminal. He specifies the first half as a range to the people.csv file and redirects the output to a.csv. For the second half, he redirects the range to the b.csv file. Now using the wc command, he verifies the data inside both files. He notices that the tag column inside the new file still has the name of the original file. He replaces it inside both files using the search and replace feature of the sed command by providing a new tag. Using the head command, he verifies the changes inside the file. 
Now that David's splitting task is completed, the manager asks him to upload this new project to the server. He first makes a tarball of all files using the tar command. This compresses all the files and folders, while also maintaining file permissions and metadata. Now that the tar file is ready, he uploads it to the server using the SCP command. The SCP command works the same as the CP command, except it takes the address of the server where we want to upload the file. Once the file is copied, David uses the SSH command to log into the server, providing the server's IP address for that. As soon as David logs into the server, he notices that his shell has changed. He checks the current operating system details using the uname command. To check who the current user is on the server, he uses the who am I command and finds out it is the root user. He should be cautious. The root user can literally destroy everything on the server. Using the ls command, he notices that the tar was copied successfully. To extract all files, he uses the tar command with the extract option. The manager warned David because he was using the root user for all activities on the server. He instructed David to create a new user for himself and also requested him to delete a user named Sarah as she is no longer employed with the company. Using the cat command, David examined the existing users on the server and identified the user named Sarah, whom he deleted using the user delete command. He then added a new user with the username David using the user add command and included this new user in the pseudo group using the user modify command. Employing the switch user command, he switched from the root user to the David user. Afterward, he used the password command to set a password for the David user. Subsequently, David logged out from the server using the exit command and attempted to log in again to the server with the new user instead of the root user. Upon providing the username to the SSH command and entering the password, David successfully logged into the server as David instead of root. He confirmed this by executing the who am I command. Recently, the server has been exhibiting unusual behavior. The manager has instructed David to run a particular script every second. This script is designed to log the CPU and RAM usage of the server into a log file. David has created a script called Monitor for this purpose and saved it. Although the script involves numerous commands, the sleep command ensures its execution every second within a loop. Ideally, David should create a service daemon within Linux and register the script. However, being new to Linux, he finds this process to be tedious. Instead, he opts to make the script executable using the chmod command and runs it using the sh command. Upon checking with ls, it is evident that the log file has been successfully created. By utilizing the tail command, one can observe the content being appended to the end of the file every second. To filter out specific information, David employs the grep command. He can either filter lines containing CPU usage information or those containing memory usage information. He then pipes the output of the tail command to grep in order to filter out live information based on either CPU or memory usage. After a few days, based on the memory and CPU usage patterns, David and his team fix the problem, and they no longer need the monitoring script to be running. David finds out the process ID of the monitor using the PS command. Then he uses the kill command to stop the monitor script from running further. David further finds an interesting video on YouTube about Vim motions and discovers the importance of Vim commands. So he wants to try out NeoVim on his system. He then uses the apt command to install NeoVim. Whenever new files need to be downloaded from the internet, David occasionally uses the wget command to download files. Occasionally, the manager asks David to troubleshoot the server. He uses the ping command to find out latency on the server and uses the ifconfig command to find network configuration. He also takes the help of the du command to find out disk usage and the df command to find out free disk space on the machine. David occasionally uses the free command to find out free memory inside the system or the top command to find out running processes and statistics on the system. 
Sometimes David needs to repeat some long commands that he used a few weeks back. He uses the history command to find out that specific command. For fun, David sometimes tries third-party tools like Cowsay and creates cool-looking diagrams using it. These were a few beginner-friendly Linux commands. We will be releasing the second part of this video with intermediate 50 commands soon. If you don't want to miss that video, please subscribe to this channel. If you like this video, please comment below and share it. This helps the algorithm to notice this video based on the views to interaction ratio. I really appreciate you guys for staying this long with me. Thanks.